Hey guys, welcome to the Wedding Pros Podcast. We are so excited about our guests today. Um, these are people that inspire us and um, people that we really love their work. And that is really what I think what we want to be all about on this podcast is connecting you to people that inspire you and help you do really awesome wedding art. And so today we got Joel and Justina on the podcast. How you guys doing? Well, thanks. Thanks Super. for having us. Yeah. So um, awesome. I got to I got to tell you guys. Um, I forget where it was at one point, like I saw that you liked something that we did or you like commented on something and I was so excited. I, it was like a cool moment for my podcasting career that you guys would listen to us. <laughs> um, so one of the cool things about what you guys do, it, for those that aren't familiar with Joel and Justina's work, um, Joel and Justina really create, I think, on the cutting edge of like editorial style wedding um, photography. And, and what they're doing is like, if you go, go check out, and we're gonna provide a link to the Instagram and we want you to go check them out um, because I think it'll kind of do your soul good to go look at some really, really interesting takes on what it means to be a wedding photographer. But one of the things that's interesting about what they do beyond just the general look and the skill and, and, and the artistry behind it is it doesn't, it, it's almost like, like when I look at you guys' work and I see like the, a lot of people who are starting out, right. It's all the light and airy and, and it's all this certain look, what kind of drove you guys to go in the direction that you did with your whole aesthetic? Um, I don't think it was a conscious choice per se. Um, we've, amassed a lot of influence over the years from just being really interested in fashion magazines, fashion photographers, um, great editorial photographers, documentary photographers, etc. So I think through osmosis, we kind of absorbed a lot of those influences. And when it came time for us to start photographing weddings, um, those inspirations were already in the back of our head. So I think what we just did unconsciously was project those um, influences mm -hmm. into wedding photography, not having a really rhyme or reason for it. Um, because honestly, we didn't really look at too much wedding photography before we started. We just went in a direction that we felt was true to us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, awesome. I think when we were starting, like we really didn't consider um, what style of wedding photography should we be? Um, we started, when would you say, like 2011, 12? 2012, um, Late and Airy was, you know, huge back then, and it still is, and a lot of people were, were and still are very much influenced by Jose Villa, and um, of course, we, we looked at that as well, but we never really thought about consciously, well, we have to shoot like that because that's popular, or that's what wedding photography looks like, um, and of course, we experimented, and there were growing pains, but um, I don't know, I think we just, we didn't really try and pigeonhole ourselves or label ourselves too much at the beginning. Uh, now, now, did you guys start with wedding photography or were you guys into other forms of photography before you dove into the wedding side? What kind of drew you guys into weddings? Uh, that's, that's interesting. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to give you a, a semi-long answer on this. Yeah. Um, well, for me personally, I, I kind of had to walk around photography for a long time until I actually started doing it for myself. Um, a brief history about my upbringing. My parents were photographers. Uh, they ran a successful portrait studio in Ottawa. Um, my dad had a, some great contracts photographing prime ministers, ministers, um, top people at a political level. Uh, he was well revered. He's retired now, but um, he, I think through watching them operate the business, watching how he would approach photography, uh, I absorbed it from afar. I wasn't really into it when, when he was doing it professionally, but uh, I think I learned a lot just subconsciously. Um, after that, in my, in my early 20s, I, uh, I got tapped on the shoulder to do uh, modeling for a while. Um, it's nothing I really set out to do, but somebody thought I would do it. So um, I spent a lot of time going to Europe um, especially in Montreal, where I was living at the time, working with a lot of really great photographers. 
and seeing how they operated and being inspired by you know, really cool sets, uh, really talented people who are at the top of their game. And uh, even then, I wasn't, it wasn't something that I thought would be a career for myself until around the age of 30, 31, I ended up um, coming back to my hometown of Ottawa. And a friend of a friend was shooting weddings at the time uh, with his wife. His wife was pregnant that summer. So he asked me, the, other, the only other person he knew who had, uh, I guess, some influence in photography, uh, to join him that summer. So I did. So I was the second shooter for, I think it was the summer of 2009 or something. Mm -hmm. um, and I kind of cut my teeth on weddings there. And I, I started to notice that it incorporated all the types of photography that I had been learning about up to then, which were elements of fashion, uh, portraits, um, a little bit of documentary. And there was a spontaneity about it that really vibed with me. Um, so from there, I slowly started doing weddings on my own. And around the same time, Justina and I started to work a lot together. Mm -hmm. We started to date and we both started shooting weddings together. Mm -hmm. um, so that in a nutshell, that's, that's my history mm -hmm. with wedding photography. That's awesome. It, it's interesting. Just, Justina, when did you come on board? When did I come on board? Well, um, we, we met through photography, but through fashion photography. I sure. finished university and um, like most arts graduates, I was bartending at the time and <laughs> needed a creative outlet. <laughs> yeah. So I put up an ad on Craigslist, uh, seeing if anybody wants to get together for my brand spanking new um, online magazine and shoot some fashion. And this guy over here answered that ad. <laughs> so, we started shooting, <laughs> so we started shooting just like random, like ridiculous little fashion class shoots all around town. And uh, when we started dating, um, we weren't living together or anything like that. You know, every now and then he'd come over uh, before an engagement shoot. And um, I just started showing up and I never really left. <laughs> I started bringing glitter and balloons and... Um, what else, right? bubbles to these engagement shoots that nobody asked for. There were some growing pains, as we mentioned pains. before. <laughs> <laughs> we grew out of the glitter, the bubbles, and the balloons. But <laughs> yeah, but I think um, you know, our, our, our fundamental interests, yeah. uh, influences, eventually started to come to the surface. Yeah. That's kind of how we adopted the style that we're at today. Yeah. I think every right. artist has to go through that, right? Of like, Ooh. first of all, just almost imitating people right figuring out like learning fundamentals through imitation but at the end of the day like who you really are is always going to come up and it's either going to be an inspiration or a conflict it's going to like either like really disturb you because you're like i'm not doing what i want to do or it's going to inspire you and like either way i don't think anybody can get away with just imitating someone else or not being true to themselves and not making what they really want to make and what's really cool is i love your story about like I was in fashion and then I saw how fashion connected to weddings. I saw how that connected mm -hmm. to weddings and what I'm making. And I think fashion and weddings are inextricably linked, right? It's like for many people, it's the ultimate moment of high fashion in their entire life. Yeah. And I think they want to be perceived like they see in those magazines. Most people, I mean, that's probably not every bride and not every groom, but it's many of them. And I think it's the thing that strikes me about your work. Um, I don't like that title editorial because I, normally I'm like, what the heck does that even mean? Like it's an, it would be in a magazine. <laughs> normally I'm like, I wouldn't see that in a magazine. That's just a picture of a bride. I do feel like your work is editorial. I have, I question if it's a real wedding sometimes. Thank you. That's a, that's a lovely compliment. Yeah. I think the wedding world in general probably has a, a habit of bastardizing every single term ever. <laughs> like, oh, I'm a photojournalistic, you know, photographer, or, you know, I'm a documentarian, you know, videographer or whatever. And you're just like, eh, I mean, you're just throwing words at the wall and seeing that if they stick. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I agree with Jay. I think um, it's interesting, like, the more I do photography and I, I look at people's work that I really respect and really love, um, yours included, um, 
it, it seems like photography in and of itself um, doesn't work in and of itself. You have to have like something that is attached to it, like in your case, fashion. Um, a lot of photographers that I really love as well started out in surfing and then they kind of moved into like the lifestyle world. And it's just like, you see the influence. It's like photography by itself, um, you know, doesn't really work. And you see a lot of photographers who are just starting, who are like, I want to be a better photographer. I need more depth of field in my images or, you know, they kind of make it about just photography um, when really they should just be working on themselves and making themselves kind of like, I don't know, more interesting. Or I, I think more interested is probably a better description of um, what most people should be diving towards. So that, that's what I see in your work. I see there's something beyond just, we take good photos. It's like, we care about this one thing. And, and yeah. you know, I mean, fashion seems like it's that kind of that route, but so, yeah. So that really leads into my next question, which is, okay. So we know kind of where that inspiration is generating from, right? Are there anybody who does work in that, whether wedding or not, I'm actually curious about both. Who, is there a wedding person that inspires you? And then of, is there like a fashion photographer that's really inspired and influenced how you guys have kind of went about what you do? Uh, for me, I think for, for our, for my wedding work, uh, the two photographers that I think influence me the most are John Villa and uh, this photographer out of Singapore who I don't think he shoots anymore. And about six or seven years ago, he had a really tiny portfolio online. And when I saw it, I almost burst into tears. It was so beautiful. Mm -hmm. His name is Desmond Tan. I absolutely loved every little photo shoot that he did. Um, because it felt like a little slice of life, and this is the same for John Dolan, it feels like the furthest thing from setup, it feels, it feels like the photographer is almost invisible there, but so visible, like a, like a movie still from one of the best directors in the world. Mm. And I, I don't know, that, that influences my work. Yeah, yeah I, I haven't thought of Desmond in a little while, and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, we were always creeping his, uh, his Instagram, you know. And you post so infrequently, like once every couple of months. And you're just like, come on, Desmond. Like, come on, man. Something. We're rooting for you. <laughs> you have <laughs> where is more of this guy's photography? But uh, you know, if you happen to be watching through serendipity now, like I, I hope you come you back. Get on it again. We want you come back. <laughs> Great photographer. Um, are you guys are you guys film people? Do you guys like movies in general? Huge. Yeah, I can tell. I can Huge. tell. That's the, in, in the work, it, it's because um, I, I think Jay might have used it, but like when I look at you guys' work, I just see um, story, you know, and, and then cinematography, just the roots there are just like, man, you're, you're trying to tell a story through an image. Um, and it's definitely there. You can always tell. It's just, it's just funny when, you know, you're looking at someone's work, you're like, the more we're kind of like talking to filmmakers and photographers, you can always tell what people are into by the work that they do. And it, it, it doesn't have to say like, I really like this movie, but like when you look at people's images, you can tell like what their influences are. Well, and um, yeah, I, I could definitely tell. One of the things that inspires me about your work is, and is it always hints at motion? There's mm -hmm. always a concept of moving forward in the day. Do it, even the shots that are still, have motion, the, the, there's smoke, there's something in there that's that's interesting, that's pushing me and thinking, not like, I never think, this girl's just standing here. I never feel like that. I always feel like it's, it's, it's cinematic, like it's a still from a film, almost. That's, that's how I would describe it. So, you know, that leads me to this question, which is, a lot of your stuff is super out of focus, Let's talk about that. I know it's a trend and a lot of people do it, but it's also, I think, a really great tool. And talk about why that's a tool you guys choose to implement so much. Sure. I'll let Justina um, kind of do this, but I'll, I'll clarify a bit of a term. Um, out of focus? No, um, not out of focus. It's actually, well, yeah, a lot of our stuff is, is actually in focus, but just slow. Yeah. Um, I, I think that's what you meant. That's what um, I meant. Um, I guess my philosophy is, this is going to sound a little cheesy, but um, when I'm photographing so certain moments, I, I try and think about how the brain works. And, you know, we're not robots. We don't, we don't remember things in a crisp, crystal clear, exactly as is way. Our memories 
fade and they change over time. And you know what you remember, what you remember one little aspect of your childhood or a really important day might change over the course of ten years into something else. And so, when I specifically use motion blur or slower shutter speed at, at very intentional parts of the day, I like to think that maybe that moment's going to be up for interpretation later on. And I like to give my viewer the option of that so that, you know, it is a little bit fuzzier. You know, are they walking towards something or running away from something? Um, is that a smile or is that, you know, is that a tear? You don't quite know. And maybe in the future, that tear will turn into a smile or that expression will turn into something else. And oh, that's just, that's just my philosophy on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it's beautiful. <laughs> I love I love that because it, it it makes you and it's very rare with I think wedding photography especially is it makes you ask those questions like mm -hmm. it makes you slow down and and look at the edges and and look at like you said look at this are they smiling are they you know and it's open for interpretation and that's mm -hmm. what art is really and like I, I think it's it's rare in the wedding world and I think one of the reasons why Jay and I were both like these people are like have you seen Joel and Justina what they're doing like it's art, you know, and it's so rare to see in the wedding world. Uh, be, you know, when I shoot wedding photos, it's very different <laughs> when you guys shoot wedding photos because I'm like, I need to make sure I don't get yelled at by this couple for not missing, you know, uh, the the focus perfectly. And it's just like my, it, it, I'm trying to push myself that way because I'm like, um, it's hard to do. It's hard to get people to trust you that way. Um, I guess my question would be, how do you get people to trust you it, it, to, to be able to create that kind of art do you find that that's something you had to work on early on to be able to just tell people like hey you know we might not do things a very certain way a very traditional way the way you know wedding photos um will usually be taken do you find that people just automatically come to you and are just like do whatever you do we love what you do what uh what, what's been your, your experience there yeah, I think most people are pretty trusting of what we do. Uh, yeah. We rarely get any kind of brief for um, a wedding. You know, some of the basic briefs for a wedding photo. But generally, yeah. um, no, like a shot list, we're pretty much free to do what we want. Most of our clients just trust us to do what we want. Mm -hmm. And that's the way we like it. Um, I don't think we ever set out to um, maybe rock the boat with, with that kind of style. Um, it's just, again, comes back to our aesthetic and what we see as um, like a nice image. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't, and that nice image doesn't always come down to like the clarity of the lens or the mm -hmm. technical aspects. Sometimes like what Justina said, it can be a little bit have soft edges and there is an interpretation in that. And we're, we're just happy that people who do hire us understand that too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, because there's a lot of people out there and there's a lot of people who like um, all, all different styles of photography. So just because it's wedding photography doesn't necessarily mean it has to be rigid and straight and clean and crisp all the time. I think sometimes people want a little bit, mm -hmm. um, something a, just a little bit different, not for different sake, but maybe just a different interpretation of what mm -hmm. they've already seen, mm -hmm. um, if that makes sense. Yeah. No, totally. I, I don't think we ever really set out to, um, like Joel said, like, I don't think we ever really worked towards like trying to be different or um, trying to earn anybody's trust per se. I think we just always showed the images that we loved the most and it sort of snowballed into that. Um, it's, you know, it's rare that we get a client that says, you know, absolutely do not shoot in your style. <laughs> <laughs> normally what happens if the client has that opinion they're probably not going to hire us anyway <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah we understand that's going to um if it's a polarizing look for mm -hmm. some some people might really be on board with it and some might not be on board with it but you know we're, we're cool with that because i think as wedding photographers we're always trying to find the people who we vibe with most yeah. as who are, who are so, my people yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So by putting that out there and putting your style out there um, in that way, I think I think we're, we're maybe attracting more of those people mm -hmm. toward us and repelling some others, but that's cool. That's just the way it is. Yeah. I even love your, just even your, your shadow coloring and a lot of what you're doing, I mean, highlights and shadows is different than other people. Like 
it's significantly I don't want to like I don't want to use um, scary words because I wouldn't say it's it's scary, but it's the type of thing I'm attracted to. It's it's a little more of that. It's edgier. It's a little darker. I mean, <clears throat> I don't even again like the the people say dark and moody. I don't I don't know if I would call it dark and moody because it also has levity to it as well. It feels like happy art, but at the same time, it just it's a lot of interesting choices made. And, and I think it does come from a pure, this is what I like. And I think, so what would you say to other artists who are making art and are terrified of making choices like that because they're afraid about losing their entire market? They're new, they're getting started. How would you encourage them to make bold choices? Nike said it best, just do it. Just do it. There's no other way to do it. And I think, you know, if you are listening and you're, you're scared about making certain choices, there's something that I can absolutely assure anybody in any industry that is listening of this truth, no matter what you do, people are going to love it and hate it at the same time. It doesn't matter what you do. There are people out there that greatly dislike Jose Villas now. And he's one of the best wedding photographers in the world. So it doesn't matter. Like, you know, it doesn't matter what you do. Just do what you love and the people will come. And there will be growing pain. You will probably lose, you know, dip a little, but then you'll get right back up. You just have to stick with it. And, you know, it's better to be, I don't know. I can't imagine not choosing what I love and how I love. And it's when I quit my corporate day job, um, one thing that I promised myself is that when I work for myself, when I create these images, I, I want to love what I do. I don't ever want to work under somebody's thumb again. So just do it. Life is too <laughs> short, right? To, to not do what you love. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's going to be people, like, no matter what, even if you, you know, work in a style that is more popular, there are still going to be people out there that don't like it. So really, it doesn't matter. I'm a hater. There's plenty of things. <laughs> there's plenty of things out there that I'm like, that sucks. And other people love it. <laughs> there's no such thing as something that everybody loves. That's true. Even, exist. Even, you're right. Even the biggest blockbuster Avengers movie is going to be viewed by millions and millions of people. But let's say in the United States alone, mm -hmm. Maybe how many people go see that movie? Let's say three million. That's like I would say infinity one people. Yeah, I mean, there's one tenth of there's nine tenths of the population who didn't see it. So even the best movie of all time, or the biggest blockbuster of all time, will only be seen by. He's not into people. it. So, you don't like it, Joel? People like the Avengers. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I have Justina has seen every Marvel movie. <laughs> it drags me to them, but I. I my eyes close over. Jared, Jared, Jared hates Marvel movies too, but I love them. Oh yeah. Uh, I mean, certain ones, certain certain ones. I'll I'll be fair on the the ones that are actually. Jared, good. I, Jared I, I, doesn't like movies with heroes that are too heroic. He wants every hero. No, to no, have, no. To be. I don't like, like really good guys because they're so unrealistic to me. Like Superman, it's, I'm it's, like police. It's I hate that guy. It's it's a modern. <laughs> like, a guy that's too good, yeah. It's a modern <laughs> fable. They're, it's called an archetype. Like, they're not supposed to be know, realistic. Um, Jared, you like it based in a little bit of reality, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I like Han Solo because he's like a New Englander. He's like kind of super sarcastic and just like a real dude, you know, who who's like selfish but also does the right thing at the end of the day. That's what I like because I'm like, oh, yeah, that's kind of like everyone, you know? Um, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> We you. <laughs> you yeah. brought up the Marvel now. <laughs> hey, so so you guys, you're a married couple, and um, you know I know a lot of married couples who make wedding art, whether it be filmmakers or um, photographers. And so, like, what is if you were like kind of nailing down the in. When I think about doing art with my wife, I think it would be so scary to me as a married man. I don't know about you, Jared, but like, can you imagine? Uh, I dream of the day where I could do it, but I just know we're not there right now. <laughs> we, I don't, well, first of all, I think it would be different if our wives were artistic, Jay. Like our, our wives aren't artistic in, a, um, I guess, in a in photography or filmmaking sense. Yeah. Um, and, and my wife just doesn't understand it. Like I, I'll, I'll like watch a movie from the seventies. She's like, why are you watching this? Like this she just old. doesn't, 
<laughs> yeah, like, what are you getting out of this? Like, it's old, and how can you watch it? It makes me feel dirty. Ew. I'm like, but the story is so good. Like, yeah. yeah. And uh, so it just wouldn't, it wouldn't work that way um, for us. But again, the thing I love about you guys' story is the art and creating something cool was kind of the thing that brought you guys together, right? Yeah. So, um, so I imagine, like, as a wedding artist, it's kind of uniquely inspiring to be married to your spouse, right? I guess so. We haven't really known any other way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jay is my work spouse. Yeah, I'm, that's what my wife said. She's like, "Oh, your your work <laughs> wife, Jared." Yeah, your work or your work husband is calling is what uh, Sam always says. <laughs> um, but what what do you guys think is uniquely like challenging? Um, what's it like to do make this kind of art? And I mean, you're running a business too. It's not just that you're taking photos. You have a brand, and you have clients, and you have all this stuff. Well, how's that with your spouse? It's actually really good. Um, I, it, it is I'm being completely honest it's, it's really good we spend every day together um, we rarely butt heads I mean I'm not just I'm not making that up am I, I like, we, we're, good. Yeah, we're, we're good we're good but I think like like you touched on we touched on before that our relationship came to be through creating art through photography so we have that at the base already in which to build our relationship. Mm -hmm. So yeah. the foundation was already laid in photography. So we already had that. We knew that we were good working together. And actually that's how our relationship grew, yeah. it grew from that. And we uh, spent three years as friends before even touching elbows mm -hmm. before. So <laughs> pretty deep foundation of, you know, liking each other platonically alone. Yeah, but, <laughs> but as the more we evolved, we discovered that we each had certain strengths mm -hmm. and weaknesses. Um, and so fortunately our strengths and weaknesses were the opposite of each other. So yeah. what were you gonna say? No, I mean, not to say that, I mean, let's not be ridiculous. Like not to say that there weren't growing pains. Like um, we have very, very, very different working styles. And you know, when we, when we first moved in together and we're already working together, like my working style is get up, you know, as early as possible, put on, an espresso and like hit the ground running. Let's do these emails. Let's talk about marketing. Let's get to it. And <laughs> That's me and my wife are not that way. <laughs> like our our um, first no. our first week together, like I would be in bed, you know, with a coffee. Joel still passed out and writing emails on my phone. He's barely awake. I'm crying his eyes open, being like, "What did you say about that contract? What clause do we have to add?" Like, oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> So growing pains there, trying to figure out like what everybody likes. Like mm -hmm. I now know no business until at least the second coffee with Joel. Mm -hmm. But Joel also knows that like I tap out at dinner. Like after dinner, I'm watching my stories. Don't. Yeah, but then at 10 p.m. Yeah. I'm like, okay, let's 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 do it. I'm watching the stories. Yeah, I'm like coffee, computer, like, <laughs> I'm in bed by one, you know, you go to bed at like 10, yeah. I go to bed at one. But there's like, there's a sweet spot in the afternoon where we really cram a lot in. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, isn't it true of any, it's not just marriage, it's work relationships too, and I think marriage is the ultimate work relationship, right? Even if you're not mm -hmm. making money together, you're, you're working, you're creating a home, you're creating a life, and, and just that any relationship is really based on respect. It's like, I respect you, you respect me. And um, obviously you guys are both accomplished artists and people who who um, are able to do a lot of amazing stuff with the camera, but also just the brand building that you guys have done, just even the from the logo to just how you've presented yourself. And I think it shows that like, it's not just, you're not just reacting, right? But you're your plot, you're planning, you're moving forward and you're creating. And I think even if we don't know it, we're drawing from this inspiration and we're building towards this life, this art, this brand that we really want to see. And so one of the things I wanted to do today, which is really exciting to me, is go through some of your images and talk about what's the story? What were you doing there? What were you thinking? What were you planning? Um, and so let's let's go ahead and do that. Um, so I want to pull up a couple images that that I just wanted to ask about so i'm going to go on the screen share i wanted to um this one stuck out to me because i think it represents 
a lot of that um, open shutter look that you guys have. Mm -hmm. I it's interesting to me because it has kind of like a very traditional moment mm -hmm. of like you know t traditional br groom picking up the bride, but then there's also like there's a a flip to it. And the fact that you said Hawaii, that was the first thing that I noticed here. I said that's Hawaii. They didn't give a flip if it didn't look like Hawaii. They were just like, here's this cool image. And, and they didn't, most photographers, when we would release that image, what's important to us is that you know that we traveled to Hawaii. So I'm going to make that blue. I'm going to make that green. I'm going to make it explode. Instead, you have this <laughs> open shutter image, black and white. So tell me a little bit about kind of that shot. It's your shot. It, yeah, it's my shot. But I, can I speak to the, That's the edits? Not just the edits. Well, the thing is, there's Hawaii, and then there's Hawaii, and then there's the there's the typical Hawaii shots that you tend to see with palm trees and everything. We happen to be on the Big Island of Hawaii here, mm -hmm. on on a family farm, and as soon as we arrived, to be honest, we we looked around and we saw very few palm trees. We saw very few anything that looked typically Hawaii, and I think initially. Part of me was a little bit, a little bit worried because we came all this way to Hawaii. Now, it's not really going to look like Hawaii. So we kind of had to work around it. The sky was very overcast that day. There was no blue sky. Um, anybody who knows the Big Island, you know, Hilo in Hawaii gets like the most rain out of any American city. I think. So that wasn't untypical of, mm -hmm. of the environment. But uh, I think we had to think on our toes a little bit. So like, how are we going to reinterpret? this Hawaiian wedding um, without the typical um, you know, Hawaiian landmarks. Mm -hmm. So, but Justine has yeah. took this picture. Um, I mean, for me, I have to say that whenever we're in a destination, and I should not say this as a destination wedding photographer, um, I suck at landscape. I really do. <laughs> it is my, I, I can't, I can't do them. Like, I think that's why we work so well together because, you know, we're both too popular, but for me, just you know, placing a couple in a landscape, I have, I that's it's just not me. So I never really consider um, location that much when I compose my images. So um, I guess that's that's where we got that. It was just, I mean, it was at the bride's parents' house, and we're in the driveway of their home, and these two just got married, and it was just, they're just so freaking lovely, these two people. Um, I just wanted to capture how happy they were to finally get married on the family farm. And, and, and why did you decide this is the image to feature? Um, did we feature this image? It was on Instagram. Oh, like on our Instagram? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there was other <laughs> no, images, uh, but. It must, must have been your decision. My choice. I, to me, I just love the, um, like I, I love the wind and the dress. I love that you can see that he's actually walking towards something. It's um, it, it feels timeless to me. It feels like it could have been shot in you know the early 1900s or today, and it it has a it has soul to it. I I don't like speaking about my own work to be honest. Yeah. I don't know. There's a soul to it that I love, and it reminds me of them. All right. So here's mm -hmm. this next one. This one is I didn't put in the email, but I just want wanted to sure. uh, feature it. Um. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> so um, I, I did read the post about this but why don't you tell the story a little because i just thought this was really fascinating okay um a couple of things about this photo a i did not take this photo this is my dad's photo um she's a watch okay so obviously this is the queen of england um when she comes to canada since the late 70s my dad has been the go-to guy to take her official portrait for her Canadian visits um, so I think he's taken her portrait uh, three or four times. Um, this particular image um, was from her 2002 Jubilee. It, it's 50 years on the throne. The thing that we actually um, messed up on this one is that this is not the photo that I was present at. The one I was present at was about 10 years later in, in 2011 when she visited again. So I think when we put this up, it was a little bit an error. Um, yeah. It should have been the other the photo, following. but ultimately it's the queen. So I'll, I'll, I'll speak to that. Um, yeah, so my my dad uh, uh, photographed her a few times. So the last time she visited, 
I got to explain, I, I served as his photo assistant. So it was really cool. She she was prompt, she was dressed to the nine, she was very proper as you'd expect her to be. And she walks in to very little fanfare. She just kind of appeared in a room with not many people in it. And she was ready to go. And, um, you know, that sense of duty uh, was probably the most photographed person in the world um, was, was outstanding. Um, just to be in her presence and just to watch how poised she was. And, you know, that she holds that, that her shoulders like that. You know, when the camera's not on her, she's very, very poised. So um, it was an honor to, to be in that room and just to watch my dad work and kind of be the portrait photographer and strike up like little conversations with her about you know, this and that, her dogs, or whatever was going on in England at the time. Um, so yeah, it, it was great to watch and uh, to, to see that, that process of work. What does your dad think about your photos? <laughs> I think I think he really he really likes it. Actually, recently he, he told us that he, I don't know, he was just you know, blowing smoke. But uh, he he said, "Oh, you've surpassed me in skill level and, and everything." Oh, that's cool. So that, that was nice to hear. I, wow. I don't know if I really wow. believe it because his portfolio is deep. Yeah. And, uh, and he has he, he does photography that's it's different than what we do. He does his style really well, but he and I've complimented him on that several times and, uh, i mean if you know anything about photography you don't you don't get this job by not being awesome so <laughs> like <laughs> yeah yeah so all right so i want to this next one is a little more conceptual and i just mm -hmm. i'm so curious about what this one is but i remember seeing this mm -hmm. image and like every once in a while and, and this is where i was like i gotta have these people on the podcast because i skip most photographers I just don't even bother looking at their like Instagram because I'm just so bored by it all. But I'll always stop and go, what is that? And then I always see it's your Instagram that I'm stopping on. And I looked at this one immediately. I stopped and I was like, what am I looking at here? What's going on? What's it reminded me of a shot, which I don't know if you've seen this movie, the lighthouse. It was yeah, we just saw it uh, not too long ago. Weird movie, but there's a shot of like this, the mermaid laying by the ocean side and it just i don't know it made all these thoughts come into my mind but it, it blew my what's interesting to me about this image is like they have this very natural skin tone this very like bright i don't know is that is that a what is that dress made of i don't even know and then you have this dark green everything else and kind of muted almost so i don't know tell me about this image well sure um do you have a, you probably have a good guess of where this image was taken it looks like iceland to me but it... that's right yeah it was iceland mm -hmm. and uh I, I took that photo of justina oh it looks so beautiful um, we we went there uh we had the wonderful opportunity two summers ago to go to iceland with another photographer um nancy beal out of chicago uh, she needed a real couple to photograph for a uh, editorial creative that she was doing. Um, who, who recommended us for that? Do you remember? Megan Lindsay Shipper. Yes, Megan Lindsay Shipper. Um, recommended us. Uh, Nancy said, Yo, you guys are great. So uh, we went with her. We did a, a, a day of shooting with her. Um, and the photos turned out wonderfully. And then we had some time to ourselves, um, which we used to do the show and many others but uh it was best because we were there in july and it's a photographer's dream you know that the sun doesn't go down until like midnight right so you always have just so much light to work with which is incredible however it wasn't enough light to get me where i needed to go so justina bought brought uh, a lot of different outfits in you in your suitcase i pack like they're on a rock on any of <laughs> yeah, <it's true. laughs> yeah. just just in case we get the opportunity you to shoot know. something cool and in this case, we did. We were driving around, just you know, driving around. I suddenly were like, "Ooh, look at that! It's all mossy and cool." And so we just pulled over by the side of the road, which is you can do anywhere, pretty much in Iceland. And we got out, and we found this completely secluded spot. And Justina changed, and she got into this um, thing. It's a scarf. <laughs> scarf. It's a scarf. It's a scarf. <laughs> it's a scarf. So, um, <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. So it's I. Like a show. I, I guided the pose along, um, but what you can't see is 
my left arm holding a pool with a Flotex soft lighter on it. Uh, and I'm holding it precariously and doing the shot at the same time. It was very awkward to get <laughs> this, but I think that little, you're mentioning the skin tone, um, I think that little lift was from the soft lighter. I just popped it. I think it was even like underexposed for ambient, um, just to give it that little lift. Mm -hmm. um, so that's pretty much what happened here. Uh, yeah, I and mean, we got pretty lucky with it. Well, what I love is that you didn't make a decision to eliminate all those shadows and those crags. It would just ruin the image. Yeah. Like it's, it's got just enough lift. And I just, it's such a great image. Um, so this is going to be Jared's favorite image because I know Jared. So I want you to tell me about this image, Jared. You want me to tell you about tell that your image? Opinion. Um, I want you to, cause I know this is your type of uh, photo. Uh, yeah. I mean, I love, taking photos of men in men's fashion. I think it's great. Uh, Jay's going to say it reminds me of James Bond, who I'm a big fan of, uh, I think. Right, Jay? Is that where you're going with that? I don't know. I just, um, I just want to hear your I voice. Think, it's so wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I love an image like that. It, I, actually, when I looked at this image, it made me think, how could you get a guy to do that? Um, and, and I, I think you answered some of those questions because I just think of some of the guys that myself, I try to pose and I'm like, all right, I have a great idea. I want you to go, you know, light a cigarette in a corner and, you know, and then look at me this way. <laughs> it wouldn't fly. It just wouldn't fly with a lot of guys. would be like, yeah, I feel, you know, okay, I guess I'll do that. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I think that's a dynamite image. It reminds me of uh, Warren Betty. Like, yeah, like yeah, a Dick does. Tracy, like almost that. like yep. noir. It's like, like most people use the words noir in like a really sloppy way. Like this reminds me of like the isolated lighted look of old cinema, just mm -hmm. because you have that whatever coming through the trees hitting him. But is this a real image? Like you just caught it or was it like, did you pose this? Um, a little bit of both. Was that me? I, think that, I think that was, no, that one's you. That's through the doorway. Yeah. Right. May I? Yeah, yeah, I think, um, you know, through shooting Joel, one thing that I have really learned from Joel in all facets of life is to slow down and be patient. And, you know, the type of shooter that I am is I probably overshoot, not as much as I used to. And I, and I, especially earlier in my career, I used to feel the need to like, you know, fill every single second with something, with, with mm. you know, with chatter or with shot, 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 close, close, close. And I think, you know, where we've gotten into our careers, it's it's okay not to hit the shutter. It's okay not to shoot at all. It's completely okay, and you're gonna get better shots for this, to just let people be themselves and let people be true to themselves. And, you know, you can catch them off guard being themselves without needing to pose them. Mm -hmm. So with this situation, this is a day after uh, Shane and Chelsea's wedding. In Mexico. In Mexico. Mm -hmm. um, and they wanted to do just like, a day after engagement session, so we did, and we're shooting this and that, and then we just noticed he's kind of like fidgeting and wants of cigarettes. We're like, go for it, and then you know you can. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think ultimately, and and I think our core philosophy when we're shooting is that we want our subjects to be comfortable. We want them to be themselves, and if that means missing out on some shots, then that's the way it's going to be. I would much rather our clients walk away feeling like, wow, Joan just didn't really didn't push us super hard, we're really uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. We had a great time. Um, I really need people to go away with that feeling um, because that's how I'd want to be treated myself if mm -hmm. I were to be quoted that. Um, so in this case, um, Shane is a real man's man, you know, very complimentary, uh, very compliment for him, but he's, he's a little rough around the edges, but I like that. And I think you can see it in him. Yeah. So he's like, I want to go for a smoke here. And I think he was standing. And then he said, you know what, you, dude, you just, can you just sit down and like, maybe just turn your chair that way because there's really nice light coming in. So can you sit there and maybe, you know, sometimes it needs a bit of a tweak. It's like, gosh, Shane, that was great, man. But maybe can you cross your leg or something? Yeah, great. And just smoke. And then every once in a while, I might say to you, I might call your name or just glance back at me. I'm just going to be over here in the doorway. So I'm like, 
I think at this time, he just happened to look back at me and I'm like, oh yeah, blow the smoke out. I think it'll look really cool when it hits the sun. When that Joel hears what I've noticed is Joel spends much more time talking than shooting. And he spends much more time getting his subject comfortable. Whereas, you know, especially me when I started, I was like, okay, click, 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 click. No one's really comfortable. And you wouldn't talk to him. And I wouldn't talk to him. Mm. So, you know, if you know there's only one shot that you need, it's okay to hit that shutter once but you get your subject comfortable mm -hmm. enough to reveal themselves in front of you. Yeah, and the last thing I'll say about this mm -hmm. is true, is mm -hmm. um, I had my frame ready and a lot of photographers that I like mention that a lot. They say, have your frame and then wait for something to happen because if you're already set up mm -hmm. and then something happens within that frame, then you're gold. That's what it's like to shoot a film too. Is You, you have a frame and action happens in the frame. You're not moving the action, you're just, you're framing the action yeah Jim, mm -hmm. exactly so that's that's the little story behind, behind that's awesome. you mm -hmm. know when i what i love about um what you're saying there is really just i can see your fashion but like you were being directed right mm -hmm. you know what it's like to be directed so therefore you have a sense of what it's how to direct and i it's one of the things that like Jared and I have worked in production. We've worked with a lot of different people. We don't just do weddings. And so I can't tell you how invaluable it is to get a range of experience with your art that's not just in weddings because when you go to that wedding, you can use it all. Yeah, exactly. And if I can give one tip to viewers, another tip is, um, especially guys, um, go out with a photographer friend of yours and take each other's pictures. Because only from being in front of the camera and understanding what it's like to receive direction can you understand what it's like to give it as mm -hmm. well. So it's really great practice to have your picture taken. It's, it's uncomfortable and it's self-facing, but you have to do it in order to empathize with people you're photographing. I love that. Yeah, that's really good. So this Bottom. is one of my favorite images. I, I love this. It's so beautiful. <laughs> um, you. <laughs> so this is another um, Diana Ross packing glam bag situation. Uh, we were literally at the Ottawa River and the sun looked nice. And I was like, hey, I have um, some veils in the trunk of the car. If you want me to jump into the river in my underwear with a veil on my head, I'll do it. <laughs> He's like, yes. <laughs> yes, please. But I'll let him be more poetic a bit. Well, what I like about this image is, like she had mentioned, like there's almost like you have this really blue shadows and this really orange. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I was just curious of like how you got a bride to do it, but you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> so no, no, no. This, this one's a little bit adventurous sometimes. And, but thank you for thinking that as, as a bride, I don't, I don't mean to manipulate truths here. Um, <clears throat> we all do some creative shoots here and there. Mm -hmm. Obviously we do. Um, I think it's good. I, you know, the truth be told, we shot this a long time ago. I shot this in the summer of 2011. Yeah, I don't. First, we weren't even shooting uh, that. Yet. I think when we first started doing it. Maybe that's the thing and, that stuck uh, out to me too. Is it looked so? It was in the middle of your portfolio, and it looked so different than the work that was next to it. On Instagram. Yeah, thanks. And yeah, and uh, to be honest, the day it was posted on Instagram was the day I was digging through the archives and rediscovered it mm -hmm. because I. I and that's a great thing to do is to look back on your work from time to time and just explore because you're going to see something new. I passed over the shot for a year I didn't even look at it. And then all of a sudden I saw it. I was like, Ooh, that's got something. And mm -hmm. uh, why didn't I see it before? But who cares? Like here we are now. So I went in and just like edited it. Yeah. Even the texture in the water. Like I can't, I'm, my eyes are drawn to that bottom right corner of the frame because it's so, yeah, focus, it's yeah. so messy looking but in like an interesting way it looks it i was just i was like how did you get a bride to do that but you know um speaking of brides this was my absolute favorite image that you posted it literally stopped me in my tracks and i i remember th thinking the caption before i read the caption i felt the caption Right. And then I read it and I was like, that is exactly how I felt when I looked at this image. And, and this is the reason I wanted to do this one last and then I'll let you guys talk, but I wanted to like, when you make wedding art, 
for a mm-hmm. living. Um, we often forget that this is what's happening to these people on their day, mm-hmm. that this is what they're experiencing, that this is what you're a part of. And I've heard people say like, I don't want to do weddings. I want to make real art. And I say this all the time on the podcast and I'll always, always say that it's like, Art is about making people feel something. It's about capturing something real and communicating something real. And what other art do we get to make in our lives that someone could say is their favorite art? But wedding, like if you work in weddings and I give you these photos, chances are it's that couple's favorite piece of art that they've ever got. And they love it and it means so much. And it's not just a photo, it's a moment. And so that's what I saw when I, this just spoke to me. And she, she was wonderful. She's so vivacious and expressive. It's, as you can see, this isn't an anomaly. It's, uh, it's, it's really how she is. Uh, she's a big personality, big loud. She's mm-hmm. out there and loving life and a very extroverted kind of person. He shot that. Justina took this photo back mm-hmm. in October in Toronto. Um, well, take it from here. when I shoot a reception, um, I, I'm pretty shameless and I am not shy. Um, and I try to blend in with the guests and I kind of, uh, I kind of work like the, um, you know, at the Oscars where, you know, one of the celebrities goes to the bathroom, so they get a seat filler. Mm-hmm. I do seat <laughs> filler. Yeah. As soon as, as soon as a guest leaves, I take their chair and then I shoot everybody around them up close and personal. Um, I don't really care about, you know, I'm not trying to be obtrusive and get in anybody's way, but I kind of know this is my job. I'm, I'm a seat filler. So that's. You know, I have to get intimate and close. So I think, you know, somebody in front of her, in front of the bride, got up and took the chair. And then I didn't leave until I got that shot and they came back. <laughs> Did you have a sense that you were going to get this shot because you knew her? Um, I think it was more the, the, the speech happening at the time yeah. uh, was, I think, from one of her siblings, mm-hmm. I, I think. And she, she, she was laughing a lot. Um, mm-hmm. And she had these big moments every once in a while. Mm-hmm. And I think you just kind of you just anticipated it. You yeah. Know? And you're like, okay, you had the camera on her again, set your frame, and then the action happens with mm-hmm. it. If I may. Yeah, of course. So for me, and this is what I was going to ask you, because I think this is a good example of um, anticipating. And, and, and so mm-hmm. my, my noob tip that I would give somebody is like, the hardest thing about shooting weddings is not shooting the wedding, but getting comfortable with the pacing and slowing the wedding down so that you can start mm-hmm. actually anticipating moments, positioning yourself, creating the opportunity, like you said, to be in the frame and not and waiting. You're ahead of the moment almost. And when I see a shot like this, I see like this moment was bound to happen on some level. And you putting yourself in that right position, right? You're like, I'm going to get something good. And it's going to be meaningful. And it's going to communicate something. So for me, that's what I get when I see this image. Is like, it's, It is elegant, clearly. It's black and white. It's beautiful. It's well edited. It's got a style to it because it's got that little bit of like a slow shutter and all this stuff. But it's also very, very down to earth. And I think like... Jared and I, we have this new product we're working on and we're making, trying to make, um, wedding art, right. But it's, that's not, um, pretentious. That isn't just so atmospheric and wacky that it no longer connects to families. And when I look at a piece of like art like this, this kind of inspires me as an artist to think, how can I create something that's got vibe, coolness, um, edge to it but also it feels at home on someone's wall and like when i look at this image and this is what i was going to say about this other image and this image first of all they're timeless this image too they're all timeless right and that and the other thing that's cool is when your kid sees this image and this image 20 years from now they're gonna be like man my dad was cool (laughs) (laughs) My, my mom is so awesome so beautiful and, and like, you get a sense of what they're like, right? And so I guess with all your images, and, and, and that's kind of where I want to land before as we leave, and, and obviously, Jared, pop in here if there's anything, but how important is it for you guys to communicate the personality of your couples in their photos? 
I think it's really important um, because ultimately, isn't that what we're all doing? You're, you're capturing somebody on one of the most beautiful days of their lives and to not be true in some respect to who your subject is, is doing them a disservice. We can all look back on wedding photos and we can see ourselves, uh, you know, 50 years from now and look back on some photos and see ourselves like posed and stiff. And we might be like, yeah, you know, I look good, but is that me? And I think what people ultimately want to see is, is a bit of truth, is themselves reflected accurately uh, as possible in some kind of unguarded moment. Um, so I think you have to listen, you have to look, and you have to get a sense of who people are. Um, it can't just be a, a, a subject. It's, it's actually a person you're photographing. And it's important to remember that. Um, yeah, I, guys, I, something that I've noticed about all of your work really, um, and, and just talking through a lot of those photos was um, on repeat too, uh, was just experimentation, you know, like, hey, let's go out and shoot this random thing. And something that I've been trying to do more is, is just go out and shoot and just get the reps in and practice. Um, do you guys still find yourself getting out there and experimenting a lot? And if so, what, what are you guys experimenting with these days? <laughs> um, we're still we're still shooting um at the very least weekly i would say i i like to try and figure out how certain photographs are taken and not replicate them but take one thing that i like out of it and see if i can make it my own um and right now i'm basically using the times that i have to work on what i think are my weakest things when it comes to photography mm -hmm. i am um... I have a little bit of a harder time just going out with my camera. I do get out there often, but I often come back with no photos. There's nothing hmm. I see that I wanted to take a photo of, which is kind of strange, unless the light is perfect or some cool compositions happening. But generally, I go out with the intention of taking pictures or being creative. And then, yeah, like I said, I come back with nothing. And that's OK, too. I think it's just the act of seeing. but. Staying inspired is, um, it's, it's always a little bit of a challenge. I, I, I love photography. I love practicing it. Um, it's a little hard these days for obvious reasons to yeah. set up a studio shoot or something. But the last studio shoot we did was in January and I love the results. I think it was really, really great and worked with some really mm -hmm. talented people. Um, so yeah, we do what we can. Mm -hmm. um, but ultimately, I, I just love getting them after shooting a bunch, shooting mm -hmm. something real. Because that has yeah. that, that's something, you know. Yeah. That, you got to get out there in the wild. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's honestly, it's been a weird time. I feel like um, just emotionally, like the, the creative in me is like, yeah, I want to get out and shoot and be creative. And sometimes I wake up feeling like super inspired, like I'm going to go out and create this art. Even if it's by myself with my dog, I want to take take awesome photos. And then other days I'm like so uninspired because it's just being caught up inside and then weddings are all moving to next year. And then the next day I'll wake up and I'll be like, well, I have the whole summer ahead of me. Like I'm going to create this cool stuff and learn how to do these things and learn how to do, you know, portraiture this certain way. And just, I mean, it just seems like a, a range of emotion. But the good thing is now it seems like it's just all we have is time. And so, um, I don't know. I, I just see a lot of creatives, um, whether they're just starting out or whether they've been in the game for a while um, and, and they just kind of like plateau, right? They kind of get to this point where they're like, oh, I know how to take wedding photos. And then it's just like, uh, you know, this is how I do things. And there's no further kind of experimentation. But with your work, I'm always like, they must always be just like throwing things up against the wall and seeing it, you know, what sticks and learning and growing and you know working on the craft because you just see that progression over time and so um yeah you guys freaking crush it yeah i mean um, thank yeah. you guys so much for being on it means so much to us and um like i've said people should check it out and 
obviously there's things to imitate, but I hopefully if there's anything you can learn from people like Joel and Justina is be yourself, right? Figure out what you want to do, do it well. And, um, I think be, be, you know, be true, be, try to do, make something pure that that's true to you. And I think, I think you won't go wrong. So, Hey guys, thank you guys so much for being on. Thanks for having yeah. us. It's yeah. great to talk to you about. We, we love the podcast. I love watching it. And it's so good just to talk to you in this, in this way. Tell people, um, where, where they can find you and how to, how to get connected if they want to check out your work. At Instagram. Mm-hmm. At Joel and Justina with a Y. Yeah, with a Y. <laughs> um, hey, and before we go, how, how did you guys uh, come up with your logo or your your icon or whatever it is? What, what's that about? Um, that is by an um, Art Nouveau artist out of Scotland, um, Charles Renee McIntosh. And um, he made a lot of um, lettering music. Furniture, furniture, yeah. icons, architecture. Um, unfortunately, a lot of his work burned uh, in the past year. I think the Scots, uh, Scotland is mm-hmm. going down with a lot of his work in it. Unfortunately, anyway, we we, we saw it one day and we're like, we love that. And what it is is, it's a bird cage with the bird on the outside of the cage. Mm-hmm. And um, I still don't quite know what the significance of that is. But us, I could probably go a little. Yeah, outside the box, yeah. maybe. Um, we, we think about like switching up our logos here and there, but it's been our, like we've, we've used that forever and we just love it so much. But it's again, mm-hmm. like like everything in business, growing pains. Um, actually, our first logo that we ever made for Joel before I was even on the team was this big, complicated Joel Beckham photography that had flowers and cameras and all kinds of things. Mm-hmm. And I put it on a mug and a uh, magnet that's on our fridge still. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah, we didn't just wake up and decide like that's gonna be a logo. We went through it too. And we're like, yeah. ooh, you know, we look back on them now. And we're like, not so great, but that's that's gross, yeah. right? That's learning. And uh, well, yeah, so I, yeah. I heard a person say yes, was- they're talking about marriage, and they said mm-hmm. a lot of people think when you get married, you're giving up your freedom, and they say they don't want to get married because they want their freedom, and then they said, but yet yeah, you go on dates, and all you do is you are fake. You put your best foot forward. Every single interaction with that person is fake. Marriage is the ultimate freedom because it's being fully known. And so it's kind of like being outside of a cage. You know, it's like a, it's like the cage is right there, but you're really free because you're in, now you're married. And so that, that's how I interpreted your image. Yeah, that's, that's a nice beautiful. interpretation. Like We're going to use that. Yeah. <laughs> you can lie about that and tell people that you thought about it. Um, hey, guys, thank you so much for being on. Um, hopefully, we get to do it again sometime, and hopefully, we get to see each other in person someday. Maybe, it, like, do you guys still go to Engage? Well, uh, we will. Um, when it next happens. time it's on. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we were just there in December. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So maybe we'll see you at Engage sometime because we're, we're going to hit it up someday. But um, anyway, awesome. Maybe we'll even hang out in, in Montreal someday. I'd love that. That'd mm-hmm. be great. If you guys ever get down there, give me a call. It's a short drive. We'll grab a beer. Yeah, that'd be cool. Great. Hey, guys, thank you so much mm-hmm. for being on the podcast. Um, if you have not checked it out, check out YouTube. Um, you'll be actually be able to see these images. If, if you're um, listening on the podcast, check it out on YouTube. Give us a sub. It helps a lot. And, of course, give us a little five-star review. It also helps a lot. And let people know there's some really cool content with awesome wedding professionals and people who are making some really amazing art. And it's at the Wedding Pros Podcast. Thank you guys so much. Have an awesome day. 